what's up guys, Joker here. And you might be wondering what the hell I'm doing outside today. Well, I'm going to tell you is that I was curious, uh, you know, how much ambient temperatures are really affected by the environments which we have our PCs in. Some people, you know, live in air conditioning, some people live in hot environments, some people live, you know, in desert climates. They have no air conditioning, you know, it's just hot all the time, just hot, 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 like so hot, like your balls are sticking to your thigh that type of hot and that's the type of environment you don't no one wants the pc game in that type of environment we know heat is not great for our pc uh you know hardware it's going to degrade it uh quicker and our pcs are going to run hotter as a result of it and we're not going to get as much performance as we would like because of higher temperatures so i wanted to see just how much ambient temperatures do affect uh, the temperatures that our PC components run at. Now, in my home, it's usually 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we keep our thermostat at, which is around 21 degrees Celsius. And outside today, as you can see, it is snowing, and it is exactly zero degrees Celsius. So we're going to see how much of a temperature drop-off we see going from inside, where it's around 21 degrees Celsius, to outside where it's zero degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna be running Fermark Valley, let those run you know, for like over an hour, really let the GPU and CPU really get worked hard and do some gaming as well to see what kind of temps we could see while we're in an actual gaming situation as opposed to just running the system full 100% bore, which is probably not realistic in most scenarios. So without further ado, let's get into the testing. So for testing this, I used my mini ITX build, which I've been covering recently on the channel. If you missed that build, I'm going to put a link to it right here as well as down in the description below with all of the parts that I do have in that build. So be sure to check that video out if you did miss it. As far as my testing methodology for this video, I did decide to run three different tests. At first, I just ran Valley uh, flat out for about a half hour, just let that run to see what the max and average temps were uh, on the GPU, as I knew this would really stress the GPU at 100% load. After that, I went to the full system stress test on Ida64 so I could check for overall temps and stability. And after that, I switched over to Rainbow Six Siege so I could get a feel for a real world gaming environment of something that I may actually play, uh, you know, right now or at Land Syndicate, which I'm going to be using this PC for. So first up, I tested Unigen Valley indoors, which regularly saw the EVGA 970 ACX card hitting around 80 degrees. And when I switched that to outside, it was running at an average of 74 degrees. So we saw a six degree drop off there going from indoors to outdoors on the same exact GPU with the same test. The next test up was Ida64, where we definitely saw our most drastic jump in temperatures by far on the CPU, where it ran at an average of 66 and maximum of 70 degrees when testing outside at zero degrees Celsius. Now switching to that indoors where it's 21 degrees Celsius, we actually saw the CPU hitting the 100 degree TJ max on the i5-6600K using the same test and the same overclock of 4.4 gigahertz. So going from indoors to outdoors, we saw a difference there of around 30 degrees, which is massive. So obviously we're seeing a much bigger difference there on the CPU going from inside to outside than we are on the GPU. So that got me thinking as to what might be causing that. And I thought that it's probably because of the cooler style. Now the CPU style cooler that I have from Noctua, with the NHLNI actually blows air on to the CPU. So it's actually pulling in cold air onto the CPU itself. Whereas our ACX card from EVGA, the 970 is actually blowing air out. So that would make a lot of sense as it's pulling cold air right onto the CPU outside. So it's running a lot colder, whereas inside it was hitting that TJ Maxx of up around hundred degrees when on that full system stress test. 
So in order to try to match things up on the GPU side with what we were testing on the CPU where we had the cooler actually pulling air in, I went ahead and took one of my 980 Ti's and stuck it in the Mini ITX rig as well, which has the reference blower style cooler, which actually pulls air in instead of blowing air out like on the ACX cards. So I went ahead and tested on that as well, and I saw it go from 77 degrees all the way down to 67 degrees. So we saw a 10 degree drop off on the reference card and also worth noting there that it was actually running cooler even inside running at 77 degrees versus the average of around 80 degrees on the 970 and this is a card that is you know generally has a higher tdp to begin with versus the 970 it's going to put out uh more temperature more temperature versus the 970 but it's still running cooler and that's really just a testament to how good the blower style uh, coolers are inside of a small form factor case like this where heat is more of an issue. So there we have it and hopefully this gives you guys a better insight into how ambient temperatures will affect how your components actually run inside the PC and I also think this shows that if you are using a very small case or in an extremely hot environment that a reference style cooler like the one I have on my 980 Ti's is probably going to be advantageous for you. This is one of the main reasons that I choose to run reference cards in my SLI setups because I believe them to run cooler in that specific configuration versus something like the ACX card from EVGA. Now that's not to say that reference cards are always going to run cooler because in a you know in an ideal environment where you have good airflow in a full size case um, you know a single card situation um, the ACX card would, would nine times out of ten should always beat the, the or ten times out of ten realistically it should always beat the reference card in that particular scenario but when you are in a really hot environment or if you're running SLI or in a really small case like we mentioned it's probably worth considering to at least look at a blower style cooler, which is not something I expected to look at here in this video, but that's the result we got in the end. So it's good information uh, that I'm hoping to just pass on to you guys and you guys can take that and run with it. And hopefully that'll have, give you more information going forward as you tr guys try to build your systems. And I would be curious to know that as well. Are you guys building any systems? It's 2016. So if you guys are building any new PCs or anything like this, especially like if you're doing a mini ITX or any build whatsoever, I would definitely be curious to see that down uh, in the comments below. Let me know what system you're running and if this helped you out at all, this video, if I, any of this information, you know, helped make your decision easier, then that's great. That's really all I can ask for with doing a video like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here and I will catch you guys next time. Ta-ra.